Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. Boy, I appreciate you being with me. Hope you're continuing to enjoy our study of the Olivet Discourse, and specifically the, the motif, the prediction of the return of the absent master, Matthew chapter 25, 14 and following. Now listen, I, as I've shared with you already, I believe that Daniel chapter 9, 24 to 27 is in fact the, the programmatic, the paradigmatic, the foundational, you know, whatever else adjective you'd like to use to determine the time for the return of the absent master. Now what does that mean? Pardon me. Well, it means quite simply this. If Daniel chapter 9, 24 to 27, sets the return, the time for the return of the absent master as no later than AD 70, then that means that Acts chapter 1, 9 to 11 was fulfilled no later than AD 70. It means that, oh, Matthew 25, 31 and following was fulfilled no later than AD 70. It means that 1 Corinthians 15 was fulfilled. No later than AD 70. It means that 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 fulfilled no later than AD 70. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. If Daniel 9, in his prediction of the time of the putting away of sin, of the sealing up vision and prophecy, which we'll get to hopefully tomorrow, <laughs> if, we, if we see that Daniel 9 and all six of the constituent elements in Daniel 9, 24 have to do with the end time, the eschatological consummation. By the way, make no mistake, the Jews who recognized it as messianic slash kingdom slash eschatological, the Jews who recognized that, they understood post AD 70 that their their hope had been dashed for a physical kingdom. Do you know we have records of rabbis after AD 70 saying, our salvation has been delayed. Because they were looking back at AD 70. They knew, they believed, they taught. That's when the Lord and the kingdom and the resurrection was to have happened. But because they had a physical concept of it, just like most Christians do today, well, oh, our hope was dashed. They went so far as to say, post-70, looking back on A.D. 70, blasted be the bones of any man who, who now seeks, unlike, you know, I mean, like they did beforehand, before A.D. 70, blasted be the bones of any man who tries to calculate the time of the end because the time of the end has come and gone and our safe, uh, salvation has not come. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the Jews understood, and they understood it based upon Daniel 9. Now look, in post-AD 70 writings, make no mistake, Daniel 9 became completely distorted and perverted to such an extent they denied it was messianic at all. But prior to AD 70, there was a strong, strong belief that the kingdom was supposed to come. Messiah was supposed to come. The resurrection was supposed to come no later than AD 70. Do you catch the power of that? I mean, this is incredible. Okay, so Daniel 9, and by the way, I started telling you uh, an anecdote yesterday <clears throat> about this uh, friend of mine that preached in Meeker, Oklahoma, and a question that I posed to him. I'm going to share that with you tomorrow. I didn't finish the story uh, because I wanted to put it under the rubric of seal of vision and prophecy because it was stunning to me. Okay, Daniel 9, 24. Seventy weeks are determined to put away sin. Let me reiterate. The great majority of believers say, well, Christ appeared at the end of the age to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And believers change the wording from by the sacrifice of himself to at the time of his sacrifice. No, I'm sorry. That is inappropriate. 
But then they point to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, in order to support their view. And they say, well, you see, uh, the writer of Hebrews says, he shall appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. And they say, see, he won't have, or uh, he won't be dealing with sin when he appears the second time. Well, I'm sorry, as I pointed out yesterday, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the resurrection, which is at the return of the absent master, what would happen at the time of the resurrection? Well, sin, the sting of death, would be overcome. Well, uh, once again, let me say, if that's not dealing with sin, I don't know what it is. And by the way, it's dealing with the sin. Not simply sin, but it is literally the sin. And it is literally the death that would be put away. Now then, to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, and I shared some anecdotes with you yesterday about the difficulty of understanding Romans chapter 11 in my young years. And I'm not saying I have every single answer to every single question that might be raised, but I will tell you this. I now understand Romans chapter 11, 25 and following to be the time of the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, 70 weeks are determined upon your people and upon your holy people to put away sin. Romans chapter 11, 25 or 26 Paul says, and thus all Israel shall be saved. Who, who's Daniel 9 talking about? Israel and her sin. But keep in mind, Israel was representative of the world. And as N.T. Wright has pointed out, throughout the Old Testament, throughout the Tanakh, we have the firm belief and teaching that what happened to Israel would happen to the world. If Israel receives her salvation, the world receives her salvation, is offered her salvation. But Romans 11, the deliverer will come out of Zion. Well, folks, is this the return of the absent master or not? I'll answer that in a moment. He will turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, that's a direct quote from Isaiah chapter 59, 19 and 20. Isaiah 59, and we're going to develop this a little bit. It'll be, you know, it'll be before I deal with seal up vision of prophecy. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry about that. But Romans chapter 11 quotes Isaiah 59. And notice what he says, this is my covenant with them. With them who? Israel. When I take away their sin. Well, is Daniel chapter 9 a covenant promise to Israel to take away their sin at, within and by the end of the 70 weeks? Of course it is. So here's the point. Daniel 9 foretold the taking away of Israel's sin, and thus offering salvation to the world, salvation from sin to the world. Daniel 9 said the taking away of sin would take place within, by the time of the end of the 70 weeks. The end of the 70 weeks is A.D. 70. But wait. Romans chapter 11 posits the taking away of Israel's sin when? At the coming of the Lord out of Zion, and here's what's critical. In fulfillment of Jeremiah 31, 29 and following, in fulfillment of Isaiah 27, 10 and following, in fulfillment of Isaiah 59. No, I do not have time to develop this, but let me simply make this point. If the coming of the Lord of Romans chapter 11, if the coming of the Lord of Romans chapter 11 to take away Israel's sin is the return of the absent master, 
Okay, are you following me? If the coming of the Lord of Romans 11 is to fulfill Daniel 9, okay, then the coming of the Lord of Romans 11 would be in fulfillment of God's covenant with Israel. Because Daniel 9 and Isaiah 59 foretold the same thing, and Isaiah 59 is the taking away of Israel's sin. This is my covenant with them. When I take away their sin. So, Romans 11 is the coming of the Lord to take away Israel's sin. Was that at the cross? The emphatic, the undeniable, the clear cut answer to that is no. Now look, I understand that all millennialists such as Kim Riddlebarger, I understand that an awful lot of people try to put this coming of the Lord out of Zion at the cross. They try to put it in Christ's personal incarnate ministry. That will not work. The taking away of Israel's sin in fulfillment of God's covenant with them, which means if Romans 11 and the coming of the deliverer out of Zion, if the coming of the Lord of Romans chapter 11, if that's still future to us, then that means that God's covenant with Israel remains valid. And that means Israel remains God's covenant people. And that means that Torah, every word of it, remains valid. But if... If Romans 11 and the coming of the Lord out of Zion would be in fulfillment of Isaiah 27 and Isaiah 59, that means and that demands that it was fulfilled in AD 70. And I'm going to vindicate that claim. And listen, uh, just this morning before I, uh, before I film, and let me get my figures right here. Okay, uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to make a package deal. I understand it's almost the middle of the month, uh, but I'll be informing uh, Alan Morton, my fantastic webmaster. Uh, I just decided, you know, I, I need to have a really, really good book bundle price to go the rest of September and all of October. So this is not a short-lived special offer, but this is a really, really awesome special offer. My book, Seal Up Vision and prophecy. Now, I'll be dealing with this issue. My book, 70 Weeks Are Determined for the Resurrection. My book, and look, I, I got to tell you, this was one of the most exciting writing projects, research projects that I've ever done. I really have to tell you that. Elijah has come a solution to Romans 11, 25 to 27. When I've shared that title with numerous academic people, scholars, I've had them go, what? Listen to me carefully. John the baptizer was Elijah to herald the coming of the Lord to take away Israel's sin of Romans 11. But John the baptizer, he was Elijah, he was the voice, he was the messenger, and he said that coming of the Lord was near, had drawn near in the first century. So anyway, all right, if you purchased each one of these books separately, it would cost you uh, $44.85, and if you purchased them separately, shipping would cost you Fourteen eighty-five, okay. So that would cost you uh, right at sixty bucks. Well, it would be sixty bucks. However, however, for the rest of September two thousand twenty-one and October twenty twenty-one, U.S. orders only. Okay. Total delivered price. What did I do? I got <laughs> have to be careful here. Total delivered price. No extra shipping, $39.95. It's going to save you 
right at 60 bucks, ladies and gentlemen. Or $20, excuse me. Told you my math's bad. So, take advantage of this fantastic offer. All the rest of September 2021, U.S. orders only. All the rest of October 2021, U.S. orders only. All three books, $39.95. That will save you $20. I am completely out of time. We will, I will show you on the flip side tomorrow how Romans 11 had to be fulfilled in the judgment, the judgment coming of the return of the absent master in A.D. 70. It was not at the cross, and it's not in the future. I'll see you on the flip side.